All right, guys, it's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. I have a little bit of a unique What The Fitness this time because this account, and I wanna be straight, straight off the bat, they actually do a really good job of laying out a bunch of different scientific topics and explaining them in a pretty easy to understand way. So this is Kurz Gesagd, I think is the way to say it, and he does a really nice job most times. But the title of this video is Your Workout Is A Bad Way To Lose Weight. And I haven't watched the video yet, but my guess is I think I'm probably gonna tell you that he's right, but also wrong, and I will explain why. But let's see what he says. Workout is a bad way to lose weight. Welcome to the workout paradox. You may have heard that exercise is great for burning calories, but working out regularly changes your daily calorie burn by almost nothing. Even people in hunter-gatherer communities who walk around nine kilometers a day burn the same calories as an office worker. How's this possible? Some scientists believe our bodies have evolved to stick to a fixed daily calorie budget. If you exercise more, your body adapts. The energy spent on internal processes is adjusted right down to the molecular level until you burn the same as when you just sat around. And even if you do nothing, your body still spends its spare calories. But instead of doing something useful with them, it sabotages you with stupid stuff like flooding you with stress hormones or causing chronic inflammation. So working out actually helps with something more important than losing weight. It stops your body using that extra energy to sabotage itself. For how exercise helps fix this hidden damage, watch our full video. What is correct about that is yes, there does appear to be a partial compensation effect of exercise. This has been shown by Harman Ponser's research looking at the Hadza. So they went and looked at the total daily energy expenditure of a hunter-gatherer tribe called the Hadza and then compared that to sedentary people in the US. And what they found was their total daily energy expenditure was pretty similar. But there's some things they're leaving out of this. First off, your lean mass is your greatest predictor of your basal metabolic rate. And quite frankly, also a really big predictor of your total daily energy expenditure. Now, total daily energy expenditure is the total amount of energy you burn on a daily basis. Your BMR is how much you burn at complete rest. Okay, so you can think about that as your metabolism, okay? That's, that's what your body burns just to keep the lights on. And then the rest comes from thermic effect of food and physical activity, whether it be purposeful or non-purposeful physical activity. So purposeful is exercise. Non-purposeful is something called non-exercise activity thermogenesis, also known as NEAT. What was weird about the data from the Hadza was they found that they did not burn more calories than the average American. The problem with that is the average American is a much larger human than a hunter-gatherer in the Hadza. So my guess is, if you actually took Americans, shrunk them down to the lean mass size of the Hadza, you would have a greater energy expenditure in the Hadza because they're doing more physical activity. Whereas your average American is sedentary, but it's being compensated for by the fact that obese people, even though they have more fat mass, they also have more lean mass on average. And lean mass is the biggest predictor of your BMR, and so, Yes, their total daily energy expenditure is similar, but the Hadza are getting much more of their energy expenditure from physical activity, whereas in Western society, we're getting much more calorie burn from just our basal metabolic rate from having more lean mass. There are also studies out of Ponser's lab where they showed that if you, ex like basically if you exercise uh, like the equivalent of 100 calories, your body compensates by burning like 30 calories less. If you think you burned 100 calories exercising, you didn't actually net 100 calories but you still got a positive effect on an energy deficit. Exercise still gets you a positive effect. And when we look at the most tightly controlled human randomized control trials, exercise does help with fat loss. If you increase physical activity, people do lose body fat. And yes, this is in spite of the partial compensation of energy expenditure. Now, what this person is talking about is the constrained model of energy expenditure, whereas basically you can move around the variables, but at the end of the day, your total daily energy expenditure is gonna be the same. But how many examples of athletes do we need to see that that's not the case? Athletes who have trouble keeping weight on. In general, there probably is something to this. Some people, if they purposefully do more exercise, they might actually become spontaneously less active throughout the day, but on average, even though there is a partial compensation effect, it is not a complete compensation effect like it's being portrayed here. And I'm glad they brought up the fact that exercise has a bunch of health benefits outside of weight loss. That's actually very true and very important. But also, something that people don't think about, exercise actually helps improve your brain's own sensitivity to your satiety signals. People who exercise 
actually have better appetite regulation than people who are sedentary. And so exercise is a good tool for weight loss. Probably the biggest reason, it improves your sensitivity to appetite regulatory signals. And two, yes, it does burn more calories. But we do know that of people who lose weight and keep it off over a long period of time, over 70% of them engage in regular exercise. Of people who lose weight and put it back on, less than 30% engage in regular exercise. If you want to lose weight and you want to keep it off, you should be doing regular exercise for the appetite regulation benefits, and yes, still for the energy expenditure benefits. No hate to this guy. This is kind of hard to pick through unless you're an expert in this field. And so what I will say is, I think this guy is still worth following because he does do really good videos, but I wish he reached out to me on this one and gotten another perspective on it. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I will catch you next week.